Are you going on a cruise? I've put together 50 cruise hacks that will help you to save money, plan better, keep organized, and all around have a better cruise vacation. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now in this video, you heard me right, I am gonna be sharing with you 50 cruise travel hacks that will help you plan a better cruise. Now, some of these might be things that you've heard before, but others are probably going to be things that are absolutely new to you. Now, before I get started, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention. So firstly, grab a coffee or a drink or a glass of wine because, well, I'm going to try to go as quickly as I can, but I really want to give you all of the information. And secondly, if you enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I appreciate it. And please consider subscribing to the channel if you like cruise tips, cruise vlogs, and well, cruise related content like this. Let's get started. So let's start with some cruise packing tips and some cruise packing hacks. Now behind me, I have a lot of items and in front of me too, so I can try to show you as much as I can. So first things first, you've probably heard of packing cubes. Over the last couple of years, people are really using them a lot. I honestly, when I first used them, I actually bought them, tried them, didn't like them and returned them to Amazon. But I decided to give it another go and I did find that they were so super helpful. So I am gonna give you a couple of tips to use. So when it comes to packing cubes, they are available in a few different sizes and of course, a few different colors as well. So here are the tips that are gonna be helpful. If you're traveling with a family, try and color organize your children's packing cubes. So if you have a girl and a boy, I don't know, do one red and one blue, give them the colors that they want, but have each child have their own packing cubes. You can even do this with his and her, it doesn't matter, but try separate packing cubes just to keep organized. Another tip is that when you get to your cruise or even when you get to your hotel, you don't actually have to unpack all of the things that are inside the packing cube. In some cases, you could just simply unzip the packing cube like this, and you can actually place the whole packing cube into your drawer or onto the shelf and it can have things whether it's underwear bathing suits shorts and t-shirts and of course there are larger ones but you actually don't really have to fully unpack all of your items this way i found this really helpful on our last cruise where it really took us less time to unpack and less time to pack back up at the end of the cruise now, another handy tip is if you are doing something like a shore excursion, use those packing cubes to pack your bathing suits or other items that you need. It really just helps to keep everything organized if you are bringing a backpack or a tote bag or a beach bag. Now, before I continue with the other tips and hacks, I will mention that I will leave all of the items that I do show you and mention in the description below, I will leave the links. Now, the whole video is not about items, but when I do mention an item, I will leave it in case you do wanna look that up. Tip number two, make sure to bring a portable luggage scale. Now, this is especially important if you are flying to your cruise port, you don't wanna go over the weight that you're allotted, so make sure to bring that with you. Number three, Luggage tags, these are so super handy. You can get an entire pack of luggage tags for a very reasonable price and you can reuse them. Now, one thing to watch is that different cruise lines have different sizes. They're usually either long luggage tags or they're shorter luggage tags. So you will have to check on the luggage tag holder that you'll need. I will leave the links below, but you can also reuse all of that on future cruises. The nice thing is it actually saves you time from folding and then stapling the morning of your cruise and possibly taping and laminating and doing all of that stuff. Once I started to use luggage tags, I really wondered why it took me so long. Number four, make your luggage stand out. Now, if you're like me, you might have black luggage or gray luggage or navy luggage, those standard, very neutral colors, and your luggage just won't stand out at the airport or even at the cruise terminal. Make it stand out by adding some ribbon to it or some Christmas yarn, or even you could buy a sleeve that goes over your luggage completely. But it will help you to find your luggage when you arrive at the airport and it goes along the carousel or when you're at the cruise terminal at the end of your cruise. Number five. Now this is a tip that's gonna be helpful if you are flying over to your cruise. Even if you're leaving a day before, you definitely wanna do that. But it is that you wanna pack by having half of your stuff in one luggage and half of your stuff in another piece of luggage from your family. Really mix and match so that if you do lose a piece of luggage, you're not stuck without any clothes. My husband and I 
do this every time if we are flying to a cruise port so that we are never really stuck without anything to wear until our luggage does get found. Number six. Now this is a really important one if you are going on a cruise. Make sure to pack a carry-on bag for embarkation day. Now this is something that sometimes new cruisers actually forget or just don't know about. So you can pack a carry-on bag that's on wheels, you can bring a backpack, you can bring a tote bag or a beach bag. I like to bring that beach bag that's right behind me. I throw it over my shoulder and I can use it on excursions as well. So that's a little tip. But you want to have the things that you'll need for the first day of your cruise. So maybe you want to have a bathing suit and flip-flops and sunscreen. You might want to have a book in there if you want to read a book. Definitely your valuables, your medication. So those are the things that you definitely want to bring with you in your carry-on bag. Something to keep in mind is that it will actually take several hours before your luggage is delivered to you in your cabin. So that's really why. Now let's talk about how to organize and make the best of those small cruise cabins. Number seven, make sure to bring magnets. You can bring magnet hooks, you can bring magnet clips, you can even bring regular magnets to hold things right onto those cabin walls. The cabin walls are actually metal on cruise ships. So it's something that a lot of people don't know about, but it's a great way to keep things off the desks, to keep things off the floor, off the chairs where we might store things and put them on the cabin walls. So these little hooks, they sell them in like packages of six or so. And they these in particular are really heavy duty. So you put these on the cabin wall and you can hold your backpacks, you can hold your, um, your baseball caps, your sun hats, just anything that you really need. We dry our bathing suits on these. And another little tip is to bring little clips that you can actually magnet clips that you can put onto the wall. And then you can put your schedule, you can put any invitations, any tickets for any excursions. You can store all of that right on the wall and be super organized. Number eight, you can bring an over the door organizer. Now, the nice thing about these over the door organizers, you can put them over your bathroom door, you can hook them up, or you could even take those magnet hooks and you can put them on the wall and you can have it on your cabin wall for the cruise lines that don't allow you to put that on your cabin door. One of those is actually Disney. So you can do this. And especially if you have children, what you can do is you can put things like your sunscreen, uh, hair clips, accessories, all of the different things that your kids or you might need just to keep those things really out of the way. And I will share a little tip or a hack from a friend of mine. And what she does is she pre-packs this over the door organizer in advance at home. It's all ready. And then she rolls it up in her luggage. And then when she gets to the cruise on embarkation day, she has it and she hangs it right up and it saves her at least a half an hour of unpacking time on the first day of the cruise. Number nine, bring a hanging toiletry bag. And you might even want to bring two, like a his and hers or something like that. Because the nice thing about these hanging toiletry bags is it's another way to keep things off of the counters, to keep things off of the chairs and the floor and other places and just to keep things organized. So this hanging toiletry bag is actually a makeup bag, but I use it as a toiletry bag. And basically what it can do is it can hang, well, it can hang like this. If you like, it can stay closed up. And when you need it, it can actually hang like this. So you can hang it on the bathroom door. There are hooks on the bathroom door of a cruise ship cabin, but you can also hang it on those magnet hooks that I showed you and you can hang it outside of the bathroom as well. And I also keep another toiletry bag with me and I keep like my first aid items in that. So I really do have both. Number 10, bring a cruise approved power bar and you can bring a power bar or a cube. And these are great because they have USBs as well. There will never be enough electric outlets in your cabin. Number 11, guess what? The cruise cabin, especially if you're in an interior cabin, is super dark. Like there's literally no light. So especially at nighttime, you might need a night light. Now you can do a couple of things. You can either leave the bathroom door open a little bit with the light on, but that might disturb you if you see a sliver of light. You can also leave the TV on at night where you can turn it to one of the channels like the bridge camera where you could see the front of the ship and then you can see the sunrise. So that could be something nice or you can use one of these night lights and this is actually motion sensor controlled. So as soon as you kind of get up, it'll go on and this is with a little battery. So this is super handy as well. I will leave it in the links below um, in the description. Number 12, if you're worried about warm, hot, stuffy cabins, consider bringing a portable fan. Now you can bring battery operated fans. These work really well and are actually super popular. So I will leave that as well. 
Number 13, if you're worried about stuffy cabins, well, you might be worried about smelly cabins. What I mean is, well, those bathroom smells. So you can buy some poopery that actually really helps to eliminate those odors. Number 14, find an easy way to leave messages or even to highlight things. So I always bring a highlighter. I was looking for it, but I can't find it right now. And you might want to bring post-its. You might want to bring a whiteboard. So those are all things just to pass messages back and forth, including even to your cabin steward. Number 15, two necessities are Tide to Go and Downy Wrinkle Release. Tide to Go is honestly a lifesaver for a tiny little mark on clothing. It won't ruin your outfit. And downy wrinkle release, something to know about cruise ships is there are no irons in the cruise cabin. Some cruise ships might have a laundrette where you can actually go and you can iron your clothes, but most of them don't. So you'll have to actually send them to pressing. It might be anywhere from four to even, you know, six or even $8 for pressing an outfit. So if you want to save that money, bring some downy wrinkle release, give a little spritz, stretch it out, maybe use a little bit of steam from the bathroom. It really does work. Number 16, bring towel clips. Yes, towel clips or towel bands will help to keep your towels, well, staying in place when you are on the pool deck and when there's an ocean breeze, those can definitely fly off and be disturbing. And at the same time, some towel clips, something like this will help you to recognize which towels are yours. And plus they're honestly, they're just so cute. Number 17, keep a beach bag, tote bag, or backpack that stays filled up with the items that you need to go to the pool. So that bag right behind me, that is the bag that I use. It's super large. I love it. So what I do is I put my flip-flops in there that I want specifically for the pool. I also leave a book that I'm reading or a magazine. You can put your sunscreen, your sun lotion, lip balm, any of those things that you're going to need while you're at the pool, just leave those in there and hang them on that magnet hook. That's also great for when you're going on shore excursions and it stays prepared for when you have those beach days. Now these cruise hacks are going to save you money on your cruise. Please let me know so far if you're finding these cruise hacks helpful. If you have other tips, let me know in the comments below. And if you are liking this, give the video please a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. So let's go on to what cruise hacks are going to save you money. So one of the best ways to save money on a cruise is to save money before your cruise. So when looking to book your cruise, have a window of time, ideally of, you know, even between two and four weeks is even super helpful. The cruise price is really highly affected by how much of the cruise ship is already sold out. So even just looking at another cruise ship or another week, even one week before or one week after can make a huge difference, hundreds, if not even thousands of dollars. And you'll want to check between a travel agent, maybe you'll want to check online and you can check direct with the cruise line as well. If you're not loyal to one cruise line, Checking between different cruise ships and different cruise lines is definitely a way to at least take advantage if it's not for a better price, maybe for some better perks or options. So definitely try to keep that open and flexible if you can. 19, book excursions before you go. Oftentimes they really are cheaper before you go. I've tested this out and I found cruise excursions to be about $10 less by booking it before I went than when on the ship, sometimes even $20. So while it's not a huge difference, if you're a family of four, it definitely does add up. Now at the same time, beyond the cost savings, well, you get your choice of shore excursions. So definitely try to book the shore excursion if you know what you wanna do before you go on your cruise. Number 20, did you know that you can bring some amount of alcohol on many cruise ships? Now, when I say alcohol, I don't mean hard alcohol, but you can bring wine and you can bring champagne on many cruise ships. So when you do this, it could really save money if you don't have the beverage package. Now, a little tip for you, if you do bring wine on your cruise and let's say you bring it to the dining room one night, you will pay a corkage fee. Usually it's $15 if you bring it and they open it. But after that point, they'll actually keep it in the dining room for you. So when you go back the next night, you can actually have that same bottle of wine. You don't have to drink it all in one night. And if you go to a different location, maybe a specialty restaurant or a different restaurant, they'll actually still have your bottle of wine. They just put your cabin number on it and well, they'll be able to bring that to you as well. Now, if you don't want to pay the corkage fee, if you open the wine and you drink it in your cabin, you can just go to any bar and you can ask for wine glasses. That won't be a problem. Or even if you fill up your glass of wine and you fill it up in your cabin and then you go to a lounge and you drink it, that is okay too. 
Number 21, this is a great tip to get specials on your cruise ship. So definitely look, once you're on the cruise ship on that very first day, I want you to check for those spa specials. That will happen even sometimes later on in the week, but if you book them on the first day, there will be a better deal. As well, sometimes you'll have specialty restaurants that are actually cheaper either on the first day or they're cheaper if you book it right on the first day. So definitely take a look at all of those packages and see if they have any special promotions that are available on that first day. Now, another way to save money when you are on your cruise is, well, there are some ways to save money on some drinks. So again, if you don't have the beverage package, take a look out for any drink of the day specials. Oftentimes the drink of the day might be as little as six to $8 instead of nine to $11 per day. So that definitely does make a difference. They may even have a little happy hour time where at a certain bar, you can have two for one drinks. And another way to save money is if there is a special drink and it comes with a souvenir glass, sometimes if you don't take the souvenir glass, it will actually be $2 cheaper per drink. That definitely does add up. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you do like free drinks, champagne in particular, or sparkling wine, oftentimes the art auction will have some days where they have a champagne art auction. So if you do like that, you can head to the art auction and you can have a glass of champagne. And sometimes at the captain's night or maybe at the um, past passenger party, you will have free drinks as well. So definitely take a look for that as well. Number 22, some shopping tips for your cruise. Now, whether you're looking for souvenirs or you're looking for some items, maybe some pieces of jewelry or some other things that you want to bring home from your cruise. So don't take the cruise line prices that you see in the shop, don't take them at face value because they definitely will have sales. So first of all, check your cabin. Sometimes you will actually have coupons that are left in your cabin. These might be promotions from the travel agency that you've booked with. So in some cases you will have that. Take a look, you might even have like a 10% discount or maybe you're a past passenger on a certain cruise line and you will have a discount. So especially if you're looking at something like jewelry, this will actually make a difference. At the same time in the shops, they may have a 10% or a 20% discounts on certain items, maybe all of the gold or all of the tanzanite or, you know, a certain alcohol if you buy two for one or something like that. So take a look at all of those promotions, but also ask the staff in those stores if another day, if it's going to actually become, well, even less expensive. Now we did actually have, well, we got a very, very good deal on a Gucci watch a couple of years ago. And the shop, um, the person who worked in the shop was nice enough to tell us that on a certain day of the cruise, there would actually be, I believe it was 30% off. So it really did make a big difference. We also had an additional 10% off. So that really made a difference. So definitely ask the shopkeepers. Also, you'll want to watch for at the end of the cruise, usually the day before, there'll be a little bit of a liquidation special. They may have this in one of the main dining rooms. Now, something to watch for is if you are looking for t-shirts and things like that, it won't be actually actually the ones that you see in the store that are for sale that are liquidating. It could be things from like past cruises. So maybe it's Alaska t-shirts and now you're on a Caribbean cruise or it could be items that they're just really not selling anymore in the store. So it may or may not be a good deal for you. And finally, there are the $10 sales that cruise ships have that actually have pretty good items, I think. So whether you're looking for a shawl to cover your shoulders or an evening bed clutch or a watch to just wear, uh, maybe on one of the islands, you need a cheap watch to wear. You can look out for that. They're $10, those items. And some of the days they'll actually have a special where if you buy six items, it'll be $50 for six items. So just something to mention. Number 23, this is like the best deal of all. And so many people think that it's maybe too good to be true. Well, it's booking your next cruise on board. Yes, if you book your next cruise on board, the cruise line will actually give you either an onboard credit to use on that cruise. So to lower the price of your onboard account that you already maybe have spent money for or on your next cruise. It does depend on the cruise line. But honestly, on some cruises, we've like gotten $250 towards our next cruise as an onboard credit. Definitely worth it. And at the same time, the deposit that you put on your next cruise is actually lower than a regular deposit. So it's definitely a win-win. You can still have that go um, to your travel agent so that when you get home, your travel agent can help you with it. And if you don't actually want to book your next cruise because you're like not sure what your date is or you still have to ask for maybe permission you have to ask for that vacation time for whatever reason you don't actually necessarily have to book the cruise you can actually put a deposit down on a future cruise and pick that date later on so all things to mention but definitely make sure to look at booking another cruise once on board 
easiest way to save money on a future cruise or on the cruise you're on. So we're pretty much halfway through now. So it is time for me to have a little drink. So I hope that you're maybe having a little drink or perhaps you put this on pause and you've come back later. But let's talk about the first day or the embarkation day tips that you need to know. So first of all, that embarkation day is the most exciting day, but it can be very tiring and it can be really crowded. So one thing that I want you to do is look for an alternative place other than the buffet to eat your lunchtime meal. So rather than heading to the buffet, look for the main dining room that is probably open for lunch. It'll be so quiet, people don't realize it. The lunch will be really good. You'll sit down and you'll be served. There are also alternative casual restaurants. So on an Oasis class ship, maybe you'll wanna go to Central Park Cafe. It is really good. Or on a Royal Class Princess ship, you might wanna go to Alfredo's, a sit down casual Italian restaurant. Most people don't know, so keep that quiet. Number 25, don't forget on embarkation day that that is when you're going to want to bring wine or champagne in your carry-on bag. So don't pack it in your luggage because if it breaks, oh my gosh, what a mess. So bring it on with you um, on your embarkation day. Do check with your cruise line just to make sure what their policy is. But if you bring champagne, it could be really nice to celebrate that sail away with champagne in your cabin. Now what you can do is just head over to any of the bars and ask for champagne glasses and bring them to your cabin. Don't forget to bring a corkscrew, a little travel corkscrew with you as well. Number 26, here are a few handy things to know about the first day of your cruise, what you want to do right away. So firstly, if you can get to your cabin, drop your items off as soon as you can and put your valuables right away in your safe. Charge your phone while you go to the bathroom, get freshened up, put on a bathing suit if you're going to head over to the pool and then plan to go and explore the ship. Once you explore the ship, don't forget to plan for your e-master or your mustard drill at whatever time you are going to do that. And whenever the time is right, try to unpack quickly when you can so you can really enjoy that first day and first evening. Number 27, at some point you will meet your cabin steward. They'll come and they'll say hello. They'll ask you if you have any special requests. Try to request some extra hangers. Honestly, you can always use extra hangers. There probably won't be enough already. So ask for some extra hangers and they'll leave them there. Hang as much as you can because that will really keep the wrinkles out of your cruise clothing as well. Number 28, make a plan for the sail away. So whether you plan to take in sail away at the sail away party on the top deck or you plan to maybe meet friends for sail away and maybe you plan to go out on your balcony and have that champagne or maybe have a little bit of music. If you put a little bit of music, don't put it too loud. Other people will be disturbed, but definitely make a plan for sail away and take it all in. It is amazing. Oh, little tip before sail away, make sure to put your phone in airplane mode. Now let's talk about some hacks that will help you to avoid seasickness. So firstly, you want to actually try to book a cabin if you can, that is as midship as possible. That good cabin location is going to probably be your best bet in avoiding seasickness, at least when you are in your cabin. Number 30, this is a really good tip and hack and it's totally natural. Well, green apples actually will help settle your stomach if you get a little bit of motion sickness. And it's really a crew tip, they use it. This is how we learned it, it absolutely works. So what we usually do, is on the very first day we head to the buffet and we'll grab a couple of green apples and we'll keep them in our cabin just in case because honestly if that ship starts to rock everybody is looking for those green apples. Now other things that you'll want to do if the ship is a little bit rocky and you're feeling some of the motion is if it's during the day try to head to like as mid an area as you can where there's open fresh air. So like at the pool deck, that is a really good spot. Now, some people will say that you could look at the horizon and that will be helpful. In our experience, it just really hasn't helped perhaps because our eye has been drawn to like the waves. So that hasn't been helpful. My own tip is to avoid looking at the water, but let me know if this has happened to you, what works better for you, looking at the horizon or avoiding the water altogether. Please let me know your tips in the comments below. Number 31, if you are prone to seasickness, honestly, bring some medication with you before you go. Very important. You might want to wear a patch and that can be worn behind the ear. Very effective. You may want to wear a C-band that works with acupressure points, or you may want to have other things like we usually bring boning. We find that super helpful. And another natural tip is to bring ginger or ginger candies. I definitely bring those and I find them super helpful. These next cruise tips are going to be for shore excursions and cruise ports. 
Number 33, when it comes to cruise shore excursions, if you booked with the cruise line, it's going to be pretty easy because they're going to give you your tickets. They're going to tell you where to meet. That's going to be pretty simple. However, if you are booked with a private shore excursion, you're going to want to know a few things. First of all, you're going to want to have their contact information. So you're going to want to have a phone number where you can reach them if you can't find them in your meeting place. You're going to want to, of course, know the meeting place. Now, another tip is when you leave the cruise ship, is that you may be on island time or you may be on cruise ship time and that might actually be different. So find out when you are booking that shore excursion, what time that is on. That actually happened to us when we were in Belize. We were booked on island time with the uh, shore excursion company, it was private, and yet the cruise ship was staying on cruise ship time. So that is really important to know. Number 34, this leads me to a very good tip a lot of people use is they bring a watch that's just a really simple watch that they wear that they keep on the cruise ship time so they make sure that they get back on time. Number 35. Now, if you are somebody who, when you leave the house in the morning, maybe you can't remember, did I lock the door? Did I not? Did I turn off the stove? Did I not? If you have those thoughts, then you might even wonder about, oh my gosh, what was the all aboard time? Did I get it right? Did I remember it right? I get like that. So what I do is I take a picture of the placard when we leave the cruise ship. It will say, all aboard and it says the time for the crew and it says the time for the passengers so it might say crew four o'clock passengers 4 30. I take a picture of that with my phone so that later on if I ever second guess myself I have it. Number 36. If you are taking a taxi or if you're Ubering and you're leaving from the cruise port consider walking about a block away because you'll just have a better chance of finding a cab or an uber and in some cases it might actually be cheaper number 37 have you ever wondered what to do in a cruise port and you want to take it easy but you want to go somewhere to eat or maybe to a local beach and you're just not sure what to do even if you researched already well what you can do is you can actually ask one of the members of the staff so you can ask somebody who works in a shop or maybe one of the entertainment staff somebody that you've met and you might want to ask them what they do in that cruise port. Now, I say the shop staff because oftentimes they actually have the days off um, because the shops are closed when you're in the cruise port. So oftentimes what they do is they will actually go out to eat in a um, in an island and they'll go to those places over the period of months. So I figure if they go to those places and if they've been safe to go, chances are that they are pretty safe for me as well. Number 38. Now, if you're in a port and you maybe don't want to eat lunch in a cruise port, what you can do if you have a very long day is you can actually come back to the cruise ship to eat. So take a little bit of a break, eat at one of the cafes or in the buffet and then head back out again. Or you can make it a day where you leave early from the cruise ship, maybe in the morning time and you come back maybe at two or three in the afternoon and you can eat a late lunch and then you can avoid maybe eating on the island if you don't want to. Number 39, when you are off on a cruise excursion, whether it's sightseeing or on a beach, always pack a few things, well, just in case. So some of the things you want to pack is some extra comfortable shoes. I usually actually just pack an extra flip-flops just in case my shoes just aren't that comfortable or maybe I get a blister. I can always change to a flip-flop. That's super easy. I put it in my tote bag or my beach bag. You'll also want to bring a refillable water bottle. That's definitely something that you need when you're on an excursion. You also would want to bring, especially if you're a woman, you might want to bring something to cover your shoulders. So you might want to bring a shawl, a scarf, or even a light cardigan. Whether you might go into a religious building and you'll need to cover your shoulders, it'll be the decorum. Or sometimes you go into a store and it's really air conditioned and it makes such a contrast from the heat that is outside and you do want a little something to cover your shoulders. Number 40, make sure to bring your own hand sanitizers or little paper soap sheets. So don't rely on other places, on stores to have that sanitizer. Bring your own when you are on shore excursions or in the cruise port. Now we're almost there. If you are still with me, grab a drink, have a sip. And let's keep going. We've got 10 more. Now we're going to talk about disembarkation or debarkation tips. I, I hate debarkation day, the last day of the cruise, but there are some things that you need to know before you get off the ship, just to make sure that you don't make any of those last day mistakes. Number 41, don't leave your packing up until the last minute. You really don't want to be up all night, the last night of the cruise, because you haven't packed your things in advance. So some things that you can do is you can gather your laundry during the cruise. You can bring like a mesh laundry bag. I will leave um, a suggestion 
in the description below a link for that. So you can actually like put all of your dirty laundry together during the cruise and then you can put that into one of your suitcases. So one of them filled maybe with the dirty laundry. Now, something else that you can do is about two days before the end of your cruise, you can actually pack up any of the outfits that you probably, well, you brought, but maybe you just know you're not going to wear at this point. So you can already get those packed up into your suitcase. Number 42, don't make the mistake of not leaving out something to wear for the last day of your cruise, the morning of your cruise. A few people do this. You will notice this on disembarkation morning. And also don't forget sleepwear. Number 43, decide if you're going to do self-disembarkation or if you're going to do traditional disembarkation. Now, the self-disembarkation, the advantage of it is that you can actually just leave your cabin in the morning with all of your suitcases and you don't have to go to the cruise terminal at the end of your cruise and look through with everybody else's bags, look for your luggage. That's definitely a benefit. The disadvantage is that you actually have to bring all of your luggage down um, to the gangway by yourself. So that means going down all of the stairs or the elevator and it gets super crowded on the last day and there is no help for this. So don't rely on the crew to be able to help you with this. The idea, if you need the crew help, is you do traditional disembarkation. For traditional disembarkation, they will give you a time at the end of your cruise to put all of your items out um, outside of your cabin door. Don't forget, like I mentioned, to keep sleepwear, um, clothing for the morning of, and of course, your toiletries and medication, those important things. Number 44, make sure to do a sweep of your cruise cabin to make sure that you didn't leave anything. So some places to look, of course, are your plugs, but something else to look at is look in your safe. Do a sweep with your hand. Maybe you left some earrings, a ring, or in my friend's case, what happened to her is she had her kids in an adjoining cabin to her. She didn't check their safe and her son actually left his glasses inside the safe. She was really surprised he would put his glasses in the safe, but he did and she never did find them. Number 45, this is super important. Do not leave the bill or your invoice until the last morning of your cruise. If you notice a discrepancy, if there's something you need to talk to guest services about, the line will be horrendous. So you definitely want don't want to do this. You don't want to have that delay on the last morning of your cruise. Ideally, keep an eye on the tab on your invoices day by day, but definitely by the day before the last day of your cruise. Number 46, if you're planning to give out any additional tips, like something beyond the gratuities that are auto charged to your credit card, if you're planning to give out any gratuities to maybe the people that are working in the dining room or a favorite bartender or your cabin steward, do that the day before the end of your cruise. Usually around dinner time is the time that you'd want to give that out. You can even fill out a little, here I'll just show you, you could fill out a little thank you card maybe and let them know how much you appreciate the work that they've done. Number 47, there's almost nothing that helps crew members out more than when you actually fill in comment cards or you fill in a survey and you mention their name. It really helps them to move up in the company. It helps them to get bonuses, things like that. So definitely if there is a staff member or two or three or five that really stand out for you, fill out those comment cards put them in. And if you're going to be filling out the survey online after your cruise, then take note of their first name and their last name, um, if you can, and their position on the cruise ship. Now I have a few more cruise tips to make your cruise extra special. So one of those things is don't feel that you need to actually get off the cruise ship when you are in a port of call. Now, many times you'll want to do that because you'll want to travel to that place and visit, but sometimes maybe you visited before. Don't feel bad if you want to stay on the cruise ship and make that your own sea day. This is especially the case if you need an extra day to relax or if you want to take advantage of those spa specials. Oftentimes on those port days, the spa is a little bit more empty and they will definitely have some better prices or some better specials and promotions for you. Something else that you might want to do is if you just are on a cruise ship where there's a lot of things to do on board, maybe it's water slides, zip lines, race cars, different things. On that day when so many people are off the cruise ship, that is a day that you could actually have the cruise ship almost to yourself and you definitely take advantage of really being on that resort at sea in port and just have the very best time. If you have done that before or if you're thinking of doing it, please let me know in the comments below. We've done it before and we've really loved it and I'd like to hear from you.
Number 49, if you're planning to go to one of the specialty dining restaurants and you're not actually sure which night you should go on, then what you can do is you can head over to the main dining room and you can see if you can find out what menus are coming up for future days. So maybe there are different theme menus, maybe there are different nights where you may like things more or less. So you can kind of try to find that out. Sometimes you can research before by joining a Facebook group for that cruise ship or for that cruise line and other people will post um, what nights the different menus were. So you can find that out and this way you can make the best decision for which night you'll go to a specialty restaurant. You might also want to check the specialty restaurants if they're available and open during the day. Sometimes during the day, it's significantly cheaper than in the evening time, and it's definitely an excellent meal. Number 50. Now, these are extra things that you may want to bring. They're definitely not cruise essentials, but they are things that can be helpful on your cruise, and you may just want to bring them. So here are the few things that I think might just make your cruise extra special. One of them is to bring binoculars. If you're heading to Alaska in particular, bring binoculars, almost a necessity. But if you're in the Caribbean or somewhere else, bringing binoculars, you might actually see marine life that you would never be able to spot if you didn't have those binoculars. Another tip is to bring snorkel gear. If you think that you're going to go on a catamaran snorkeling trip or any other snorkeling trip, or you're just going to head over to the beach, bringing your own snorkel gear will be cheaper. And of course, probably more sanitized than if you use it from a company or a rental company. Also very handy is to bring a portable charger. We bring this and we just find it super helpful because, well, our phone just doesn't get charged and stay charged the entire day. So we're actually able to charge two phones at the same time if we want to. I can throw this even into my bag and have my phone charged while I have it in my hand. It really, really works. And I definitely think it's almost a cruise essential. Now this one might seem a little bit silly, but bring along a selfie stick tripod, well, a Bluetooth kind. And the reason for this is even if you're not a cruise vlogger and you're not a travel vlogger, you don't have to be to have this. It is really just so handy. One of the reasons is if you wanna take pictures of yourself or yourself and your family, or maybe you and your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. If you wanna do that, you can actually, with the Bluetooth remote, you can set the tripod down with your camera in it, your phone in it, and then you can just use your little Bluetooth remote. You can click on it, and when you're ready, it will take the picture. At the same time, if you are taking any videos, you can actually hold it safely in that tripod. It'll keep it pretty steady, and you will get a better view than anything you could get by holding with your hand. Uh, alone. And nowadays, honestly, it will be unlikely that we'll want to pass our phone to many people and we might be social distancing for the first little while. So bringing this selfie stick tripod could be really handy. So I hope that these 50 cruise hacks and tips have been helpful for you as you are getting ready and planning your cruise. Now, if you have cruised already, please let me know below if these cruise hacks and tips were things that you found helpful. If you have other additional tips, I would love to read them please let me know in the comments below. If it's your first cruise, please let me know. Say first time cruiser, let me know in the comments below as well. I would love to hear from you. Now, if you did like the video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Well, bye for now and happy cruising. Phew. That's over. Time to finish my drink.